and I'll just edit that into the theme song if that's all right. <laughs> okay. Alex. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Alex. And Alan. I seen that. And then, so you have a YouTube channel. Just your name, right? Alex Myers? It's just Alex Myers, yeah. Nothing and fancy. When when did you start that? Um well I started the YouTube channel itself it was July like ninth or something like that in two thousand fifteen. Okay. And then I uploaded a video about a week later. My first video I ever uploaded was on Jan not January, what? Uh July fifteenth, I think. Or I started my YouTube channel on July ninth. First video was July fifteenth, twenty fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. And uh were you, did you always kinda of have the idea of like breaking down entertainment stuff and do an animation or was it just kind of evolve into that no i mean if you if you ever go back not not you i mean you as in yeah whoever's listening everyone um you know you, you go back and look at the very first videos that i ever did i mean i started out with no clue no direction no anything um like i had never like in high school i used like windows movie maker for like english projects or whatever um, but I'd never picked up a real camera. I'd never used like real nonlinear editing software, like nothing. I'd never tried anything about it, but I was just like, I used to watch a lot of people on YouTube and I was like, that would be fun. Cause like, so I work in it here in Japan Okay. and it is very boring. <laughs> um, unless you, well, for me, like, you know, I, I, as you can hopefully pick up from my YouTube channel, like I'm a pretty creative person. I like to, you know, do art and comedy and, and, and movies and TV shows, that type of thing. And so for me doing like it, which is kind of the antithesis of creativity, because yeah. it's all about following a process and putting in a logical pattern of everything. You know, for me, it's very boring just because it's like, it's just not my thing, you know? And so I was really bored and I was kind of, you know, like when you do a job long enough, you kind of get into like a routine and a pattern and it's just like, you know, wake up same time every day. You do the same stuff at work, go home the same time and you kind of get into this like life pattern, yeah. thing, you know? And so I was basically just playing video games like all day when I had free time. And then I kind of hit this point where I was like, you know, playing video games is fun, nothing wrong with it. And watching movies and TV shows itself is fine, but it's like, I'm not doing anything productive with my time. Mm. And so I wanted to at least work towards something like, you know, even if, even if I never became a big YouTuber or I never became anything, it's like, I wanted to at least learn some skills. Like for example, video editing or uh, cinematography or something that I could like get better at over time instead of just like playing a video game and getting good at it. And then when you're done, like, so what? You yeah. Know? Yeah. And so I was like, well, YouTube is there. And this is this is back, you know, 2015. This is back when um, well, this is back when anything could get monetized on YouTube. And so you would hear these stories about these people making tons and tons of money. Like that was like 2015 was the first time the big news story came out about PewDiePie and he earned like $12 million yeah. or whatever in a year. And so I was like, I was like, well, yeah, YouTube seems fun and uh, who knows, maybe I'll get money out of it. Who knows, you know? <laughs> Um, and so I started and I had no clue what I was doing, but because I had been playing so many video games up to that point, I was like, why don't I just talk about video games? And so the first little while I talked about video games, but I was really just using that as an excuse to learn how to use a camera and learn how to use editing software and stuff. And then once I got more comfortable with that, I started branching out into sort of different things. Like throughout the, the life of my channel, I've tried pretty much every kind of video you can imagine like i've done you know video game news i've done like reaction type videos i've done uh i tried vlogs for a little bit i tried a let's play once and i was like this sucks <laughs> and so like i tried i tried like a whole bunch of stuff and then um i started watching a lot of like like uh people like nerd writer or people like that who would do these kind of video essays where they would be a little more serious and it wasn't all about you know, yuck, yuck, bunch of jokes, but it was kind of like talking about something, either a TV show, a movie, or just in society in general. That's kind of like, you know, you break it down and you kind of look at it from a couple of different angles and it's, it's a video essay. Yeah. And so I, I was like, well, that sounds like kind of fun. And it can, you know, instead of me just filming myself all the time, I can learn, you know, like Photoshop and graphic design and motion graphics and this type of stuff. And so that was a way for me to kind of, you know, I was using those video essays as as an excuse to start learning 
you know, more about motion graphics and things like that. Like I had no intention or ex- expectation really of getting big on YouTube mm-hmm. at that point. Um, like I think I have a video, one or two videos back when I had like a thousand subscribers. I think they're still on my channel somewhere where I'm just like, you know, being a small YouTuber sucks because like no one cares about you and like no matter what you do, it just no one cares. And, you know, big YouTubers always say things like, oh, s- subscribers don't matter. It's all about the content. But like that's obviously not true. <laughs> um, you know, because if you ever try and talk to a big YouTuber and if you're not as big as them, then they just give you the finger, you know? Yeah. And so – you know, and so I was like, I kind of gave up on the idea of getting subscribers. And I was like, I just want to make something cool. And so that's when I made um, the Amy Schumer video. And that, I mean, I guess m- maybe you weren't around when that happened, but that was the first video I ever made that went viral. Okay. Which is really, fu- which is really funny because, you know, when I gave up trying to go viral, I went viral, which is <laughs> how it goes, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Like it got, it got pretty big. Um, I, I used to get like, 50 subscribers a month and then i put out that video and for the two months after that video which i think that video went up in april of 2017 so pretty recent and then i got 12,000 subscribers that month and then i got another 12,000 after that wow. so i went from like 2,000 to like 25 26,000 ish something around there and then, it, and then it just plateaued off. And I kept making video essays because I was like, well, this is fun and people like it. And then no one watched. <laughs> Everyone just – people liked the Amy Schumer video. And after that, no one gave a crap about anything. But you know, it was kind of like I was having fun making them. I was getting better and better at doing motion graphics. And I was like – I was, I was, I got to the point where I could, like, I could watch um, like th- things that people take for granted. But you watch like a lot of commercials or um, – like the uh, interstitials when you're watching like TV and then they'll say like coming up next, but of that has like all these graphics. Yeah. Yeah. Like I would watch that stuff and I would just try and like learn from it and try and figure it out how they did, like how they did all the stuff. And so I would kind of emulate and sort of take ideas and put them in my own way. And I got to a point where I was getting so good at it that it just wasn't fun anymore, I guess. Hmm. Like, I don't know if that, that sounds really like uh, pretentious, I guess, but like, this is not new know, anymore. Right. I just think like when I was learning how to do it, it was brand new. And I was like, oh, this is so awesome. And, and learning these techniques and like, you know, you have these eureka moments where like, oh, I figured out how they did that thing in that one commercial, you know, that, that kind of thing. And then I got to the point where it's like, I could just whip out these videos like half asleep and, yeah. and they, you know, they could come out. Cause like, it just wasn't like when you're learning a skill or something like that, you get to a point where you're so good that you can't really learn anymore. You mm. can just kind of keep getting increment, in- incrementally better every time yeah but like there's there's no there's no like big there's no like next step or like next mountain to climb it's just like you just keep getting a little bit better maybe or you can do it faster but not necessarily better and and then you know those videos weren't picking up much steam i was getting like maybe four or five thousand views per video which compared to what i was getting before was a lot but you know again like i'd given up on this idea that like oh people are going to watch my videos and i'm going to become some big youtube person like you know i'm going to be the next nerd writer or whatever like i kind of gave up on that cuz like the views weren't coming and the subs weren't coming but i was having a lot of fun up to that point and then i kind of got to this point where like i said where it was kind of like i mean they're fun to make i guess and some people like them but for me there's no like next challenge or whatever it's just i'm just doing more of what i've been doing for the last month kind of thing yeah and then, so one video I made that I'm still really proud of is I made a video essay about Riverdale, about season one of the TV show Riverdale, yeah. and just ha- how it's kind of full of these tropes of teen dramas, and it kind of, you know, I used that as an example to show that every teen drama is really just the same show. Mm. Uh, I thought I was very clever when I made that. And so I, um, uh, and so season two is coming out. And, you know, a couple of people that watched the season one video were like, oh, you should watch season two and make you know an update to this video because it was really cool. And I was like, sure, I'll do that. And so I started watching season two and I got about three episodes in and I was like, this is literal garbage. <laughs> like season one was tropey and cliche and cheesy, but like it was very aware of what it was. Yeah. So it was kind of like everything was like a wink, wink, nudge, nudge kind of thing. Like, like, you know, you know, like, we know this is dumb, but just play along guys. Like it was, it was cool to watch in a campy kind of way. Yeah. 
But season two, like, it just takes itself so seriously. And I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. You know, like, it's like soap opera level of cheesy, you know, where it's like, okay, what is happening? And who, who, who thought this was a good idea? And so I made it three episodes in and I was like, I can't finish this. But I was already committed, like, in my time schedule wise, because I work a full time job. So for me to schedule time to make a video, it's like, it has to be all thought out beforehand. Because, mm. you know, I only have so much free time. And so I was already kind of committed to making a video about Riverdale. And so I was like, and I was like, but, you know, to, to make like a, a, a sort of semi-serious, you know, motion graphic heavy video essay, but then the whole time I'm just making fun of the show, like those two, those are like two different genres of video. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause like a, a video essay is like an analysis or an in-depth look at something and then a different kind of video would be making fun of a TV show, like a parody or something. Yeah. Um, and so putting those together in my head just didn't seem like a good idea just because it's like, it would seem very serious and fancy graphics, but then my voice would be like, what the heck is this garbage? And I just didn't think it would go well together. Yeah. And so now about a, a month or so before this, I had fallen down this like rabbit hole of watching YouTube animators, particularly people like odd ones out or Jaden animations or, um, Alex Clark, like some of these people who are big animators. And I've fa- kind of fallen in the rabbit hole of them. I don't remember how, but, you know, you just stumble on something and then suddenly you've watched 100 videos, you know? Yeah. And so I, I was like that. And I was like, now that's something that seems like a lot of fun. You know, it seems like fun to learn how to do animations and things like that. And it's something that I could maybe kind of work on in between doing video essays and maybe I could make one or two and just, just so I could learn how to do it because I was curious to figure it out, you know? And... uh and so I bought a little tablet and I had, you know, I already had the microphone. So I started just kind of a little bit here and there kind of learning how to draw, learning how to do animations. I mean, because I'd done so much work with the video essays, like all, all, let me back, let me back up for a second. Every type of animation pulls from the same fundamentals, whether it's claymation or cartoons or motion graphics, they all pull from the same fundamental principles of like speed, weight, perspective, that kind of thing. Yeah. And so because I had spent so much time doing motion graphics, like a lot of the core principles of animation or or at least how to use the software to do animation, I already knew it because I'd figured it out. You know, instead of characters doing poses, I did it with like squares and circles, but same same principles. Yeah. So I took those principles and I was like, okay, what if instead of, you know, making all these fancy things in like Photoshop or in After Effects and then animating those, what if I did the same idea but I drew like a little dude with his hands out or whatever. And so I kind of did that and played around with it. And eventually I I was like, you know, what if I just tried making a little animation about Riverdale season two? And then in this animation, I could just make fun of the whole show and be like, this is really dumb, guys. You know, maybe because that would maybe work a little better, you know, a little lighthearted, just kind of little stick figure cartoon characters, whatever. Maybe that would fit more with the theme of making fun of this show. So I made it, and after I made it, I've mentioned this a couple of times, but I was actually like really scared to post that video because I was like, after it was done and I watched it back, I was like, everyone's going to hate this <laughs> like so much, you know, because up until this point, you know, I'd be doing this kind of s- not super serious, but kind of serious, like in-depth look that at, like, you know, is beauty a talent or what does success really mean? You know, this kind of stuff. And so for me to suddenly come out and be like, <laughs> Riverdale's garbage, guys, I thought like everyone's going to be like, what is this? This is so dumb. I thought I was going to get like maybe a thousand views and I was going to lose like a hundred subs. And then everyone's going to be like, never do that again. And I would just apologize <laughs> profusely. Yeah. Turns out that was not the case. And uh, like I put that video out and just the next day, just my Twitter was blowing up um, within like, uh, I have to go back and look, but I think it was two or three weeks that video got like in two or three weeks, that video got like over like 500,000 views, which for some people might not sound like a lot, but for me who was getting 5,000 views after like a month per video, um, it was just like insane. And my Twitter was exploding. I was getting tons of followers. Everyone's messaging me being like, dude, I saw your Riverdale video. That was so funny. You know? And I was like, maybe I should do another cartoon. And so I, I just kind of fell into doing animation like, I mean, obviously I'm interested and I like doing it, but it's like, you know, like when I first 
did my first real video essay, I just kind of wanted to try something new for me. And then that did really well. And that motivated me to keep going. But then it didn't quite do so well. And I, you know, combined with the lack of reaction mixed with the fact that I was, I was at a point where I, I felt like I knew enough about it that I could do it well enough. There's no challenge left. Yeah. And so that I was kind of losing a little bit of motivation, I guess. And so I went on to animation again, just to try it for fun. And then that exploded. But the difference this time is that every animation I put out just is like bigger than the last one. So, uh, you know, I, I had no intention of doing video essays or animations or really I had no plan at all, but I just kind of fell into everything that I've done. And now I've kind of hit this point where like, I, I've sort of become this animation channel by default in a way. So that's, I, I just fell into everything. I didn't have any plans at all. Yeah, no, that's super cool, man. You, you live in Japan, right? I do. I've been in Japan for over 11 years now. What brought you to Japan? Well, it's kind of the same story as most people. Um, you know, I, I, like I, I'm a kid of the 90s. And so back in the 90s, like Japan stuff was like really big. Uh -huh. Like that's when kind of like the anime boom started. Um, you know, obviously video games were really starting to become like a big legit thing. Um, cause you know, like early nineties, you had like super Nintendo, then you had like N64, then PlayStation. And like, you know, when Final Fantasy seven came out on the PlayStation, that was just like a revolutionary moment for every kid who was alive then. Yeah. Cause it was just like, holy crap. And of course, Mario 64, you know, for every kid at the time was like a revolutionary type thing. And so like at the time in like the sort of mid to late nineties into the early two thousands, like J Japanese stuff was like a huge deal. You know, Cowboy Bebop was out and everyone liked that show and, and just like anime and video games, everything was so big then. And so growing up, I was like, I really want to go to Japan. Like Japan is just like the awesomest place ever. You know, everything's video games and anime all the time. You know, that's what I thought. <laughs> and, um, and so that kind of, that sort of fueled that interest. And then in high school, I was an exchange student in Okinawa for six weeks. And I attended like a Japanese high school and, and everything like that. And, you know, like it was long enough that I got a really good feeling about what, you know, Japan is and what it's like and all that. But it was sh short enough that it made me want to come back. Yeah. And so, you know, just, I mean, I've mentioned it before, but I was 18 and, and I, I worked in a call center and I saved up money to buy my own plane ticket. And then I just came to Japan just by myself and like, my original thought was like, maybe I'll be able to stay in Japan for like a year or something like that, like a gap year type of thing. Yeah. Um, and then I'll, uh, and then I'll just go back and I'll have this cool story to tell everyone like, I lived in Japan by myself for a year, you know, you know, just like, uh, cause you're, you know, when you're 18, like you don't really think things through, you just kind of do it, yeah. you know? And so I didn't really have any plans or anything. I just, I was like, Oh, I'll just go check it out. And then, you know, suddenly 11 years went by. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how that happened, but here, here I am, you know? Yeah, no, I totally understand. We've been in Thailand for, I, I was telling you, seven years now. And uh, it's hard to remember all the days going by. It's like, it just feels suddenly here we are. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's so true. Cause like, you know, like while you're going through it, everything seems like, you know, it takes a long time and it's like, like, you know, I, I've been through a lot here in Japan and it's like in the moment, everything feels like it's taking like a long time or whatever. But yeah, looking back now, it's like 11 years just feels like it went by in, you know, like in the blink of an eye kind of thing. What is your uh, perception of Japan? Has it changed much since you've been there? Oh, it's completely changed. <laughs> um, like I said, when I, when I was, you know, younger and obviously when I was first in Japan too, um, you know, I had this idea, like I was, I was, I was a huge like weeaboo back in the day. Like I loved anime video games so much. Um, and, what, and it, I came to Japan. You, what was that? What'd you call it? A, a weeaboo? Yeah. A, a, a weeb or a weeaboo is, is, uh, it's like a negative term for someone who really loves Japan. Gotcha. I don't think I've ever heard that before. 
Oh, it's, it's if you look on the internet, it's like the people who you know dress up in cosplay and they sleep with like body pillows with anime girls on them and everything. I wasn't that bad. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll give myself that credit. But I'm like, I I was like so you know I just watched anime all the time. I played video games all the time. Um, not that those things are necessarily nothing wrong with that in and of itself. Yeah. It was just like I was so obsessed, you know. And so I came to Japan, and you know, the first year or two I was here, I was all about like, oh, I gotta collect all the manga, I have to read all the comics, I have to watch all the anime. But then eventually, you know, like after like a year or two, I don't remember exactly when, but after a year or two, like, you know, I kind of realized that like, no one really cares at all about this stuff except me, mm. and like a whole bunch of other like foreign people who think that Japan's all about that. Yeah. And uh, and and I quickly realized like, oh, this is it's actually kind of weird. And like, you know, like, like a lot of Western people have this perception that like, well, like I said, Japan's all about, you know, manga and anime and, and, and video games all the time. But it's like you come to Japan, you realize like, aside from Akihabara, which is the big like nerd mecca place um, where all the all the nerds congregate together. Aside from that place, like no one in Japan cares at all about that stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, and people read manga, um, maybe a little. You know, people read manga the way that people in the West read books a lot of times. Like it's it's pretty normal to see manga, but this idea of like collecting manga and and playing video games like a, as like a, a not hobby, but like as like a, a that your your life is video games. Like it's looked down on even more than it is in the West. Like the West is way more accepting of nerd culture than Japan is, hmm. even though a lot of the Western nerds are all interested in like Japanese stuff. It's kind of like backwards in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And so my perception has completely changed. Where it's like now, like I I don't watch anime, I don't read manga. Like um, I wish I had time to play games sometimes, but I just between my job and making animations, like I have no time at all. So, yeah, like, I, you know, thinking back to me when I first came to Japan, I thought, like, I'm going to be like the anime master, you know, like, <laughs> like, what, what, like, I was such an idiot back then, you know, I think it's, I think people forget, or it's, if you, if you don't live in another culture, it's easy to assume or forget that it's just life. Like, it's just kind of normal. People are just living, like, there's a lot of similarities wherever you go, where people are just people. They interact very similar and they have... I made, I made an animation of just about some things about living in Japan. And that's one of the things I said at the very beginning was how, like, you know, a lot of people ask when, when people find out that they, or when people find out that I live in Japan, they always ask me the same question, which is, what's it like? Yeah. Which is such a weird, it's like, what, what, like, what do you mean, what's it like? Like, how do you explain that? But yeah, like in their mind, you know, Japan is this crazy place with like, you know, anime everywhere and everyone's crazy hair and everyone, but, but yeah, it's like anywhere you go, like, I mean, maybe not anywhere, but I assume most places you go. Cause like, I mean, like people deep down, everyone's the same. Yeah. Like we all kind of think the same way about most things. Um, we all want to live life a certain way. You know, like we all want to be happy. We all want to be successful, that type of thing. And so it's like anywhere you go, most people are the same in more ways than they're different. Yeah. You know, and so like, I yeah, think, a lot of people have this. Sorry, go ahead. I think everyone's trying to get to the same place. They're just using different momentum to get there, if that makes sense. Like the some some places are fueled more by religion or more places are uh, fueled by, you know, status or, you know, climbing the corporate mm -hmm. ladder or uh, family relationships, but everyone is still trying to just be happy, you know, and find love and be content with what you have. Yeah, absolutely. And so like when, when people come to Japan or, or when I came to Japan, you know, I, like, like I said, I quickly realized that like, I mean, it's fundamentally, it's not so different from anywhere you go. And so, you know, people are going to work and they're eating out at, you know, Italian restaurants and they're, uh, going shopping for clothes and like, it's just, it's all the same as anywhere you would go. And so it's, it's just so weird to me to still see. And I mean, even to, you know, more than ever now that the internet is so ubiquitous, it's like anytime anything slightly weird happens, like in Japan or really any country, like that's the only thing everybody focuses on, you know? Yeah. 
And so, like, people have this idea that Japan is just like, oh, it's just like the craziest place. Because on the internet, all they see is the, you know, like uh, of the thousand things that happened that week, there was maybe this one weird thing that happened on TV. And that's the only thing people see. And then everyone kind of assumes that that's, that must be normal, you know? Yeah. Well, like, a, a, I think a big thing is the game shows from Japan. That's, uh-huh. uh, I think that can fuel a lot of the perception is that it's just, well, I see the, the, yeah, well, that's, that's my favorite. And by I say favorite, I mean, least favorite thing to see on the internet because it's like those. Okay. First of all, I, I don't know who, who listens to your podcast, but you know, I'm sure some people have seen the sort of Japanese game show type thing, but it's like, first of all, in Japan, there is no such thing as a game show. They don't exist. Um, have you ever seen the show Whose Lines It Anyway? Yes. And it's, it's a bunch of comedians who are doing like partly scripted, partly improv, um, just weird stuff. Yeah. Because they're all comedians being weird together. That's what all those shows are. Like every time you see a Jabby's game show, it's basically like Whose Lines It Anyway? And so like, you know, you have to imagine like, like the, the main reason why sort of people are like, oh, Japanese game show, Japanese game show, it's just because there's, there's a language barrier because they can't read what's on the screen or they don't have the sort of contextual knowledge of what's happening. Because if you showed whose lines it anyway to someone in, for example, Thailand, uh, like a, a Thailand like local native person who's never, doesn't speak any English and they've never heard of the show before, they'd probably be really confused. And they'd be like, American TV is weird, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And it's the exact same thing because every single one of those quote-unquote game shows is a a comedy variety show that's where you know, 10, 10 professional comedians get together and they do something funny. And so that's why everyone's like, yo, in Japan, they have game shows where there's like, no, Japan has zero game shows. But, you know, America and, and I guess Europe or whatever, they have lots of game shows. And so people sort of take their knowledge of something and they like attribute this sort of, they attribute a different context to a situation I don't understand. Yeah. If that makes sense. You know, mm-hmm. like, like they're trying to understand it through their mind. And so like, Oh, this is like, this is like a game show. Like, uh, like, um, like fear factor. Like, like, yeah. It's, yeah. This is like the Japanese fear factor. Right. And it's like, no, there's no such thing as that in Japan, but it's, it's, it's hard to explain. And you know, it's, it's more fun for people to imagine that these are just everyday Japanese people off the street trying to win a million dollars by, walking up slippery stairs or whatever. Yeah. Um, even though that's not at all what's happening. Well, one of the, my wife and I, we watched this show. I'm trying to remember what it was called. I think it was Jack Whitehall travels with my father. I don't know if you saw it. It's on Netflix. And no, I haven't seen that. it's a comedian who is traveling with his dad to different countries. And it's all, it's all scripted, but it's shot like a reality show. And it's really frustrating to watch. I don't recommend it. <laughs> But uh, the first place they went was Thailand. And so we're like, oh, let's, let's see how this is. And the, the son, his perception of Thailand was all, you know, getting drunk on the beach and passing out and going to parties and doing all this stuff. And that while that is true in some places in Thailand, there are a lot of like party towns and beaches and all the stuff that goes along with that. Um, it's such a small percentage of what actually goes on. It's like so much quieter and more relaxed and just kind of like the party scene or the, that perception is not, that's just the tourist perception. You know, that's not what your life is like when you live here. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's exactly the same in Japan too, where, you know, I mean, I mentioned the whole, like the whole nerd, anime culture thing but even just like whenever japan is shown in a tv show or a movie um they only show two places which is they show like downtown neon lights which is only one one small part of tokyo Uh, like every state every place that looks like that they're all just within like one mile of each other so it's really just this very small pocket that looks like that um i mean it you know and it definitely looks like the way it does in the movies but it's like people imagine tokyo and they think of neon lights and and crazy like racing cars which does not exist um wait tokyo drift or, isn't accurate is that what you're saying uh, shocking i know <laughs> i know sit down sit down no but um or they just show like you know everyone has like donkey carts and they're all like they all live in like a temple and stuff and it's yeah. like that doesn't exist either 
Yeah, like like uh, when I saw um, the Wolverine movie, I forget which one it is. Um, the Wolverine, I think it was, right? Is Just, it the Wolverine? Yeah, I think it's very, yeah. very clever. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, the Wolverine's in Japan. Yeah, I think that one's yeah, that, just like, the Wolverine. Yeah, but I saw that and like you know, as an action movie, it's it's fine. But it just like you know, it just like for you, it's like if someone who'd never been to Thailand watched that Netflix show you're talking about, they might find it entertaining. Yeah. Um, but because you have this knowledge where you're like, you know, this is so wrong, I can't even enjoy this thing, right? Yeah. And so like that's how it was for me watching that movie because it was like oh he's going to be in japan and i knew what was going to happen but i kind of hoped because it, it was marvel you know it's like well, maybe they'll get it right but no it's like <laughs> they just show japan as as like, like you said they show you know this like weird downtown crazy lights and then it's like oh love hotel and then suddenly they're in the countryside with old people who ride donkeys and stuff and it's just like nowhere looks like this like this is not this is some like white dudes like fever dream about japan this is not what japan actually looks like and so it was very frustrating like like you said it was very frustrating for me i, I just i hate that movie not, i don't even hate the movie i just it's like it just they got everything so wrong to the point where it's like i just can't i can't look past this you know yeah well i mean that's why like dc right the comic books you have gotham and metropolis because they I, wanted to avoid people being like no this isn't what my town is like this isn't what my city is like they knew naming it new york or chicago or la like that would frustrate people because that's not what it's like and hollywood doesn't really seem to care that much when it comes to going international yeah and it's really I mean, like, I understand that, you know, movies need to entertain people and, and like, I, I get that. And, like, it's not, like, I'm not, I'm not here to be like, oh, it's disrespectful to the Japanese culture. Cause, like, I don't, I don't care that much. Yeah. Um, like, you know, I, like, I, I live in Japan, but I, I don't really have any, I don't have a horse in the race, you know? Yeah. Um, about, and, and as far as that regard, I'll leave that to someone else who's more qualified than me. But just the idea where it's like, you know, forget the whole, like, cultural respect and the whole like whatever it's just like like i mean you really have to tr try to get it that wrong you know like you really have to ignore <laughs> yeah. a lot of parts that are are very obvious you know and it's it's always and like when you asked me to do this podcast uh you mentioned lost in translation yes which um is in the same boat just where it's like just the way that hollywood treats anyone who is like different and like i don't even mean this in like a like a sort of like uh um what's the word i'm looking for like in like a social justice kind of way but i just mean in general it's just like you know anytime anyone goes to any other country or any other city it's so they always just pick out like the most absurd things yeah you know, like like whenever they show, if there's ever a TV show or a movie that shows Mexico, they always just show like a desert with just donkeys dead bodies. and yeah, yeah, exactly. Or anytime you know people go to Thailand or you know in Japan especially, it's it's just like it's it's just so frustrating how they just kind of well, have you okay? Have you um heard of the whole Logan Paul stuff that's going on the internet right now? Yeah. And how, you know, basically to sum it up, you know, he, he, he's been in Japan doing vlogs, which all of which are exactly what we're talking about right now. It's just him like acting like Japan is just this like elementary school playground for him to play around in. Yep. Um, and then, you know, the big controversy is that he went to the suicide forest and which in and of itself, I think is not that big a deal. Like he went to the suicide forest to film a vlog, like that's. I think that's fine. Yeah. But then he found a dead body and then he filmed the dead body. And then they were just like laughing about the whole situation. And they were like, Oh, I saw a dead body. Ho, ho, ho. You know? And it was just like, and like, it was, I don't know if you saw the video, but like you could tell that body hadn't been dead for that long. Mm. Um, um, you just, by, you know, he like, you, just by the, the decomposition of the skin and stuff, you can tell it, it. It's not like it was like some body from like 20 years ago. It was pretty recent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just he had no respect and no idea of the gravity. And it's just kind of – that's how a lot – like the way Logan Paul treated that thing is a, a microscopic version of what Hollywood does every time they show a movie in a different country. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Like they always just like 
show like look at how weird these non-americans are you know like it's always just so obnoxious and annoying and i guess you know it's like maybe it's because and i'm sure you feel the same way maybe because i i live abroad and i i see america from the outside instead of being in the inside the whole time and so and i've been to you know this country they're talking about so it's like when you, when you know enough that it's so wrong it's just like it's like so frustrating you know yeah no yeah like what drives me crazy is so Thailand has, I think it's got two perceptions, uh, kind of through the media. Where one is, you know, the party scene and prostitutes and all that type of stuff, but then there's the real like the Buddhist religious yogi side of things, and you'll see these tourists walking through who are just having this like this uh, the eat pray love life experience, you know, where they're just like everything is changing them, and, it, and it's like you guys are just in the way, like get out of the way. You're, it's not all about you. you your life experience. You're going to forget about it in two weeks. Like just get out of here with your floppy pants. And oh, I just, <laughs> sorry. It just, it just bugs me. Like the, there's so many people who are just trying to live life day to day. And when tourists come in, it's like this, it's their moment and their life has changed and they don't realize that they're just, standing in the way of people who are trying to live just a m Monday, you know? Yeah. I think, yeah, I think what you just hit on is what I've been trying to say. Um, and you, yeah, and you, you, your point is, is completely perfect, which is like when you have tourist spots in like, you know, Western countries like America or like Europe or, or you know, somewhere UK, whatever, yeah. it's always like the spot is special, like Stonehenge. Yeah. or Grand Canyon, or Big Ben. It's like this thing, this spot is special because it's beautiful or it's whatever. Um, but in like any other country, especially Asia, but I'm sure South America has the same thing, or like Africa definitely has the same thing, where people become the attraction. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, so, and, and that difference is so big because when it's just a thing, like a, a cool rock or a cool tree, it's like, hey, there's a cool tree that's famous. I'm going to take a picture. Like that's that's great. You know, everyone do that. But the idea that like someone's daily life is someone else's entertainment yeah. is really kind of gross if you think about it. Yeah. You know, and like the people that they go to Africa and they film all oh, the starving children and they film the tribes doing their dance and they film whatever. It's like that's just their life. They're just trying to live life and and, you know – and you're just watching it. It's like a human zoo kind of thing almost. It's really obnoxious. Yeah. Well, the, the poverty tourism is, is disgusting. That, oh, I'm sure, I'm sure in places like Thailand and, and uh, Myanmar, I'm sure it's big. Yeah. Yeah. It's really bad. It is the, the, probably the more frustrating part for me is I, I know a lot of groups here and what they do and you know, who they work with. And, and then I, I also know them on Facebook and I see the things that they say that they do and, I'm like, wow, this seems very different, guys. Like, it's not mm -hmm. quite accurate to what you're selling, to what you're doing, and it's not that important for, I don't know, it's it's hard. It's, sorry, I don't want to, <laughs> the... No, I, I get you, I get you. I mean, you know, Japan's obviously not nearly in the same economic situation as Thailand or, or Myanmar or whatever. Yeah. Um, but still, it's it's the same, it's fundamentally it's the same idea where it's like, you know, oh, look, look at these, look at these non-Western people trying to live their lives. Isn't that cute? You know, it's mm. very, there's like, whether it's like, you know, I don't, I don't mean to sound like some kind of like everyone's racist or everyone is sexist. Like, that's not what I'm trying to sound like, but yeah. it just, there's always this connotation of like, you know, the very like condescending look at like, look at anyone who's not me. Isn't that cute? Like they're trying to be like me, but they're not kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, I think it's ignorance more than anything else. Like not not so much racism or you know, prejudice. It's just ignorance. Like, like oh, this person is. If if I was in that person's situation, I'd be so sad because my life would seem so difficult. But that's not that person's perception all the time. You know, like maybe they are sad. Maybe they are depressed about what their life is like. But I know a ton of people who are living in the garbage dump who are much happier now because they have an income and a house where they are, you know, they've come away from a war torn country that was, you know, full of landmines and 
having to get chased away by the military all the time. Like it, it, you have to see it from, you know, the whole spectrum of the thing is, I, I don't know. Sorry. I don't mean to, <laughs> it, it frustrates me. Um, that kind of stuff really gets on my nerves when people take advantage of that situation, especially when it's not helping them. And that's one of the things that happens a ton out here. Um, but that's, that's not really about Hollywood. That's just about people being jerks. Well, but no, but I mean, but that, that, that exact mentality is what drives Hollywood to treat other countries the way they do. Right. Yeah. Because it's like, like when they, when they show, you know, like uh, India, for example, they only show the slums where people have like dead bodies, like in their local rivers, you know, mm-hmm. that they only show that part. Or when they show Japan, it's like, they only show the weird stuff. It's, it's still based on the idea of human zoo or like human tourism, I mean, I guess human tourism is that's called tourism, but I mean, like, um, you know, this, this idea of like, look at how weird and different these people are, you know, like it's still based on that same mentality, the the same mentality of people who go to Thailand just to look at poor people, just so they can feel great about their life is the same, that the same lens through which Hollywood shows all these countries anyway. Yeah. Yeah. No, like, 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 like slum dog millionaire, like, I mean, obviously, India has you know a lot of problems with their uh, castes and their sort of society and all that stuff like that. But it's like there's so much more to India than just like look at these poor kids. Isn't this terrible? Yeah. Their life is really good, you know. Like, isn't that great that they defied the odds and they came, overcame the problem? Now go home and eat twenty hamburgers, you know. Like it's so it's just this this it's hard to explain, but yeah, w- what you're saying is it definitely ties into Hollywood. I think even though it's not directly about this one specific movie that we're talking about, but it's just the lens through which kind of the Western world in general views anyone who's different. It, 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 it it shows in the way that people think about countries, the way that Hollywood shows movies about these countries or TV shows, whatever, like it's all, it all kind of ties back together in a way. Yeah. What is, what is something you wish would be shown more um, about Japan? What, I don't know if that makes sense. Like in the movies that they would hit on more, do better at telling that side of Japan. Hmm. I mean, there's, there's a lot. Um, there's a lot. I mean, like when I was growing up in America, I never really noticed this all that much, but like now that I'm, of course I'm in Japan, they're like, for, you know, for example, I'm surrounded by, uh, Asian people. Mm-hmm. Surprise, surprise. Right. <laughs> and so, and you know, and I am like the very, very visible minority. Um, and then whenever there's like, for example, another white person, on TV, like I, I already know exactly what's going to happen, which is this person is going to be used to be the butt of everyone's jokes. Yeah. Right. Like, like look at how weird he looks or look at how big his nose is or um, look at how bad his Japanese is and look at how much of an accent he has, whatever, whatever. And so now whenever I watch like TV shows, movies, whatever, and there's like the one Asian character who, who is the the joke character right like look at this funny asian man look at the funny asian man you know like like that's always what they're like um and like you know growing up like i never noticed that i was just like oh this this is funny asians are funny yeah and then you know now that it's the reverse it's like you know i imagine when a lot of asian americans see these type of movies they must be really frustrated the same way that i'm frustrated when i see you know uh uh bobby white boy over here you know who's like coney chihuahua you know and like just like, oh, I can't, I can't watch the show because this dude's on. I imagine, you know, Asian Americans probably feel the same way. And so it's like, one thing I wish they would get right is just like, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm, like how to put it into words is, is kind of, I mean, I'm sure you, you know exactly what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Like, I mean, with the, I, I just wish they would just acknowledge the fact that people are people and, and like, you know, Japan isn't all about businessmen with straight black hair and 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 they all talk really funny and they're like it's just like people are just like i mean people are sarcastic and people are just chill and people people get you know it's like oh japanese people they just work all the time but like no one wants to you know yeah. like like they all they all talk about like man if i could go home right now i'll tell you what you know and so it's like just the, the idea that you know that people are are people i guess which yeah. sounds it's dumb and cliche, <laughs> you think it's very obvious, but it's just like, you know, like, I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain, but. 
Well, uh, like if you go and I'm getting, I mean, yeah, if, if you if you watch a show, and all the white people are exactly the same, no layers, no separation, it would be a terrible show. But yet, when you have an international actor, it's perfectly fine when they're just the trope. You know, they're exactly the same. They have a goofy accent. They do the same things. They're you know, like it's it's so easy just to repeat that and no one question it. When people are so layered, um, you know, from culture to culture, from, you know, town to town, like there's not, you're never going to go to one town and be like, oh, everyone's the same here. But yet, yeah, you, they, they can do that in media and no one bats an eye. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, you know, that, that's like exactly the, the thing, like I said, here in Japan, where it's like, you know, when you have like a, a Japanese drama or whatever, for example, and then there's there's you know there's three Japanese girls and three Japanese guys and and like each one you know like like this girl is she's the brainy girl and then this this girl is the tough girl and then this guy is the nerdy guy and then this guy is the sports guy you know like I said they're all kind of layered and and they all have you know sort of two three four different dimensions through which their stories are told and then when there's the foreign character the white guy he's just a foreign guy yeah you know like like he has no he has no character other than the fact that he is different and it's like you know again like i I never really picked up on that kind of stuff because you know i grew up in iowa and so you know like there was some hispanic people and then a whole bunch of like white people and and but looking like i said earlier you know looking at at movies and tv shows now it's like that still happens like a lot where Mm. it's like you know, it's like this person is the black guy, and like that's that's their whole shtick is like, like you know this 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 guy is the he's the smart guy. This guy is the sarcastic guy. And then the black guy, you know, yeah, or like and 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 the Asian girl and her her personality is Asian. Yeah. You know, and it's just really like it's it's annoying just because like obviously I don't I'm not like offended. You know, like I'm not mm-hmm. offended in place of Asians, but it's just like I've been on that side. I've been on the other side of that type of thing where it's like anytime there's a white dude in the Japanese movie, it's like, I know exactly what he's going to, Oh, yep. There he goes. He's just the funny white guy. Yeah. And, uh, and it's just really frustrating. Um, it's one of those things like once you see it, you can't ever unsee it, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like, now it's like, like there's a show, um, called, uh, the good place. You ever heard of it? The good place. Yeah. It it rings a, bell but I, I don't it's on NBC and it's on netflix i mean i i don't know you know if netflix in thailand or how it's set up i don't know anything about that but if you have netflix you can probably check it out it's called the good place it's a comedy show okay. anyway um and the main cast is it's a white girl an indian girl an asian guy and a black guy and then some older white guy anyway it's very international cast but like the fact that their their races are never ever brought up in any meaningful way mm-hmm. um like as in it's like like you know like i just described everyone by the way they looked but it's like you could swap all their races and nothing would change yeah and i just thought like it did a really good job of being like just like it's very international very very um uh, multicultural multiracial cast but that means nothing to the story it, it, but like in, in a good way I yeah mean, where it's like like you can have an international cast and they all have different personalities and different things and obviously you know their their race you know, ties into like where they're from or whatever, but like them as people in the show, it's just like, they're just regular people who just happen to be this way. Yeah. Um, and, and like, that's something I was like, Oh, that's really interesting how like, it's not actually that hard to get it right. You just have to like, it's almost like you have to not try as hard in a way, you know, because it's like to be like, Oh, this character is Asian. Let's make them do funny Asian things. Let's Google funny Asian things. Like you have to like put some research into it, but to just make a regular character, like, like, take the whole cast of Friends and just change all their races. And yeah. Like, you theoretically, you should be able to do that without really changing much of anything. Yeah. Um, Unless you're racist you know, and you want to make them a trope. <laughs> that's sure, the right. That's where the issue comes in. Is when you want to, you're like, oh, well, you're black, so you're going to act this way. And when there's like, well, there's no reason why Chandler couldn't be black. Like. Yeah, and it's like, well, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it's actually easier to do it the right way, I think, than to do it the wrong way. Cause like you have to like start looking up tropes and stuff to do it the wrong way, but to do it the right way, it's like, you just have to write your character like you write any other character and then just be like, no, oh, just make him black. Why not? You yeah. Know? Yeah. What is, um, I don't know if you guys ever talk about it or if you, 
your friends in Japan have a um, thoughts about it. But the every time there's like a, a traditional, I'm trying to think what the Scarlett Johansson movie was. Ghost in a Shell is that what it was? Yeah, that's the most. Yeah, yeah. Most the, recent. So the Hollywood version of an anime. Yeah, version. and uh, the whitewashing, the idea of taking a Asian character and making them white, and people get real upset about it, and they're like, "Hey, why not?" you know, put an Asian person in this role, why change the race? And I understand why I get the the reasoning is, well, Scarlett Johansson is going to bring in a ton more people because of who she is. But right. my question is, how does, how do, how do Japanese people feel about something like that? Do they care? Is it ever brought up? Because it can be a big deal in America, but I don't know if it's a big deal anywhere else. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, it's it's not like Japan is one singular entity that has one opinion. Yeah. Um, but but I, I agree with what you're saying. But yeah, I mean, just like from what I read about it, I didn't go too deep in it because, like I said, I don't really care that much about it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I, I have opinions about it, but it's not like I'm not going to go on Facebook and make like a whole bunch of posts or whatever. Yeah. But um, but I mean, wh- my understanding is so like in Japan they do the same thing just in the reverse all the time, which yeah. is. They take American movies and then they sort of license them or the script or whatever. And then they make it a Japanese version. Like there's a Japanese version of Ghost. There's a Japanese version mm. of uh, a whole bunch I can't think of right now. Um, but yeah, there's like Japanese versions of Hollywood movies where everyone's Japanese and they localize it. So it takes place in Japan and it you know, takes place, uh, you know, things that, that sort of work in the Japanese context. Um, and so my understanding is that Japanese people don't actually really care that much yeah. just because it's like, oh, they made a Hollywood version of a movie and then this character is now white. And they, my understanding is most people or the majority, you know, over 50% yeah, yeah. would probably just be like, well, of course, you know, it's, it's an American movie. They have American people, American yeah. people. I mean, in Japan, well, the thing is also, I mean, like for, for Japan and for, you know, m- most countries – in the world are rather sort of homogenous in their demographics, mm-hmm. um, more or less. I mean, like, you know, like, um, obviously every place has different people, but I mean, like, you know, like Japan is Japan and China and I'm sure Thailand are mostly Asian people. Now yes. probably not ton, tons of white people and black people, I imagine. Yeah. Um, or, you know, most African countries are mostly black, um, or, or whatever, you know, most European countries are mostly white. Yeah. And so, so America is is really an anomaly in the world, you know, just the idea that, um, you know, you have like a, a majority race or a majority demographic, but, you know, America is not like a white country. It's just happens to have more white people at the moment. Yeah. Um, it's really just a group of like a whole bunch of people. And so, and so like, you know, from a Japanese perspective, it's like a Japanese movie has Japanese people and American movies have white people. And to them, that's just, that just makes sense. Yeah. Like, oh, of course, of course it would. And so like... I mean, obviously, it's kind of weird that, you know, like in the movie, her name is Makoto and then she's white. That's kind of weird. Yeah. But like, but the idea that a white actress would play the lead role of a movie that used to be a Japanese movie from a Japan perspective, as as far as I read, and again, I'm sure there's many differing opinions across the board, but from what I've read on sort of the somewhat official lines and like, you know, from not, not just like commenters on message boards, but from like, you know people who actually have opinions that matter. Yeah. Um, my understanding is like, no one really cared that much. Mm-hmm. They're just like, well, of course they would. Why wouldn't they? I mean, the, the, like, like you said, the real, the real, uh, sort of people being upset about it mainly comes from like the, the Asian American demographic who feel that they're very underrepresented in Hollywood because, you know, like I said, America is a whole bunch of different races and there's a lot of Asian people in America, but there's not a lot of Asian people, in important roles. And like we said earlier, most Asian people in movies and and TV shows are usually the funny friend or the comic relief or the, the, the funny lady who plays violin or something. You know, it's like the weird, uh, stereotype roles instead of being like a role that matters. Yeah. Um, and so when you have a big, you know, cause ghost in the shell is a pretty big name anime. It was, it was a huge deal when it came out. Um, and so the idea like, okay, you can make a Hollywood version and the main character is this Japanese like robot named Makoto. Let's get a Japanese person or, or at least an Asian person in there. And then when they didn't, 
you know, I'm sure a lot of Asian Americans felt pretty b- betrayed in a way where it's like, you know, like if, if, if the character was like, if, you know, if the character was just like some random person, maybe it wouldn't be a big deal. But the idea that like the main, like the main character who is Japanese and who has a Japanese name and then they gave it to a white person, that does seem kind of weird, you know, if you line yeah. it all up like that. Um, but to answer your question, which I, I probably already answered, but it's no one really cared as much because in Japan they do the same thing. In Japan they they I don't know Japanese wash or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> a lot of things too. Yeah. So like people don't people don't see it the same way that someone in America would see it. I yeah. guess. Yeah, that's that's kind of the what I figured, or at least from my experiences here, it seems like the. Well, I mean, it's kind of anytime someone's protecting someone else is generally a bigger deal to the person trying to protect than the person being attacked in quotes, you know, like it's that social justice warrior mentality can sometimes get out of hand in that aspect where. Right. Yeah. Well, in, like, especially in this case, it's, you know, people were getting offended on behalf of Japanese people. Yeah. But not that Japanese, you know, any particular Japanese person would ever was offended themselves like it's like people were preemptively getting offended about it without yeah. like getting the opinion of the person who it's kind of like um i just read this recently like you know the old cartoon character speedy gonzalez yes you know from looney tunes or whatever uh-huh. um you know he, he's he's kind of this sort of mexican like hispanic caricature like he has an accent and he's all like whatever um and a lot of people who are not hispanic were offended by him and it's like Speedy Gonzalez, he's a racist stereotype. He's, you know, this is just, this is just an example of, you know, 1950s America, whatever, whatever. But, um, and then like Hanna-Barbera got rid of the character because they're like, okay, he's a racist stereotype. People are offended. Let's get out of it. But then like the Hispanic American society was like, no, we like him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we like Speedy Gonzalez. He's like, he's like a, a funny, you know, kind of cool Hispanic character. I like, think he's great. And so it's the idea, like a lot of people, it's kind of like this like uh the offended olympics in a way yeah where it's like people are trying to be the most like preemptively offended about something i don't know i don't know if they are actually offended or if, if they just want to prove how nice they are or something i don't i don't know exactly i don't want to get too far into it obviously, yeah but, yeah it's a weird it's yeah, a I mean, like it's a tough thing to navigate because while the i think the intention is good the action is misguided a lot of times. Um, like the desire to protect and to take care of people is good, but you don't always need to, it doesn't always need to be done. Like I, I don't know if I've ever met someone who couldn't be made fun of in a, when you know the person cares about you, who's doing the joking. Like when there's cruel intent behind it, obviously it's different, but like, when you know, oh, this person actually cares about me, it's not it's not the same thing. And so when, you know, like with the Speedy Gonzalez thing where they're, you know, pointing out different things and making them extreme, it can seem offensive, but is it really meant to be offensive? I think I think intention is gets lost in a lot of things like that. Yeah, I mean there's obviously a fine line because like you know, just because you meant something as a joke doesn't always mean that it it is a joke. Yeah, you know, like, no, yeah. Like, you know, everyone has things that they don't want people to make fun of, and we all have things that we're sensitive about. And obviously, there's no way you can really know that without knowing the person. You know, yeah. like like you could make I can't think of an example, but you know, you talk about something that someone has, and like for you, maybe it's not a big deal, but for that person, you know, maybe it's like they're really sensitive about it, but. Yeah, it's it's hard to know. And I mean, like you said, the intention is good. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, it's like, hey, this could be offensive to someone. Therefore, I want to bring it up as a thing that could be offensive. But yeah, like in, in a lot of ways, a lot of people, I mean, not a lot of people, some people take it like too far. And just like the fact that they get offended on behalf of others, like becomes like their whole shtick yeah. in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, that's what they do. Like they, they get offended by everything and they bring up the fact that this is, that this might potentially be offensive to someone. And I, like you said, 
the intention is good. I mean, you know, like trying to be nice is not a bad thing. Yeah. Obviously. Um, but just when it becomes this like Olympic sport of like who can get the gold medal of being the most offended today. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, it, it just gets ridiculous because it, it undermines like real issues because when, when everything, you know, when everything is offensive, then nothing is offensive. You know what I mean? Yep. And so it's like, if, if, if you get offended by everything, then when there's something that like is really a big deal, you know, like you're treating it the same as something that's really trivial. And so it's like, it, it, it takes away the severity of something that is like a really big deal. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, one of the last things I wanted to ask you is what, do you ever feel like you're in, uh, in a zoo when you're walking around Japan? Do you ever feel like everyone's looking at you? Like it, it's, I don't know. Here in Thailand, it's it's really hard to ever feel invisible or feel alone, um, <laughs> especially if I'm with my wife and my kids because they're uh, oh. blonde hair, blue eyes, and just stand out so much. But even when I'm by myself, I feel just always people are aware of me. I, does that make sense? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, you said human zoo. Like I think of it, I made it, I put it in, in the video I made, but like – it's more like being a celebrity in a way, but yeah. like not, not in a good way. It's all the bad parts of being a celebrity, but none of the good parts. <laughs> yeah, none like, of the you know, money and fame. Like, right, exactly. The whole thing about you know being a celebrity is like you get lots of money and fame and sort of uh, social power, I guess, in yeah. a way. You know, like you're a celebrity, right? Your opinion means a lot. Um, and then in return, you know, you got paparazzi taking pictures of you and people point at you on the street and people kind of talk about you as if like you're not the same person as them, you know, like this kind of, um, this kind of, you know, double-edged sword type of thing. But, yeah. but like I said, in return, you get this kind of money and fame and you live in, in Beverly Hills and that type of thing. Um, but when you're in Japan and I imagine Thailand's maybe the same way, it's like you get the people that look at you and point at you and like, they, they want your attention just because like, it's like, Oh, I, I talked to a foreigner today. You know, like they, yeah. they want, <laughs> In, in the same way that someone would be like, yo, I saw George Clooney at the cafe and I took a picture of him. It's the same type of mentality as that. Yeah. Um, like not so much a zoo, but it's just like people. Yeah. It's like, yeah, people see like your celebrity, like they want to shake your hand. They want to take a picture with you. They want to talk at you and they want you to acknowledge their existence yeah. in a way. Like they want to, you know, they say hi and I say hi back and then they're like, Oh, I talked to a foreigner today, that type of thing. Yeah. But like, but when it matters, you know, people always remind you that you're, you're not one of them, I guess. If yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a weird type of racism where uh, racism, like I think racism has a weird connotation to it. Cause I mean, it is racial, right? Like you don't, you don't look the it's, same. It's you obviously racial, yeah. but it's not, it's not hateful. You know, it's like, Everyone, the <clears throat> the worst, the most annoying thing is when you walk in a store and all the employees turn around and like hide because they don't want to deal with the foreigner. Um, I don't, I don't know if that happens to you, but like the they just they're like they're uncomfortable speaking English or something, and so they'll just like duck out, and you can never find anyone to help you, and like stuff like that, and like small little things, or you can hear someone speaking in their language making fun of you or making jokes about you, and you're like, well, I know what you're saying, like. It's, you know, it's just, just always things just going on around you about you, but not with you. Right. And it's like in, in that way, and, and you know, again, like, like I said, um, I grew up in Iowa and so, you know, I was never really different in that way. Yeah. I was different in other ways, but not that way. And so, and so now it's kind of like. Yeah, I'm not going to say I know what it's like to be black in America because obviously I don't. I, mean, yeah. I wouldn't even dare to say that. But I do know what it's like to where yeah, people just – they don't trust you and they just don't want to deal with you yeah. just because you look a little different. Yeah, um, you're like an instant inconvenience. Exactly. It's like – you know, and you know, they make a lot of assumptions about 
how you think and who you are and what you can and cannot do just based on the way you look. You know, yeah. it's like, well, obviously he can't speak my language because he looks different than me. Or yeah. obviously he doesn't like the foods I like because he looks different than me. It's kind of these things. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I guess it, it is racist in its own way. Like, you know, it's, I mean, no one's, no one's burning a cross in my front yard or anything. Yeah. So like, it's obviously not like at a level. Yeah. Um, but it's just, yeah. Like I, I totally understand the idea of like, you you're riding a bus or a train or something and then you sit down and then the person next to you suddenly stands up and goes somewhere else yeah and it's kind of like did they do that because they're getting off at the next stop or did they do that because they just don't want to sit next to me yeah you know there's kind of always this it's kind of always this moment of like hmm why did they do that and like you know i'm not going to sit here and be you know, say like i'm super offended by it because like I said, I don't really care that much. Yeah. I mean, after after eleven years, you get used to it. And it's kind of like, well, it's just how things are. I guess. Yeah. But, but yeah, it is. It is kind of a weird feeling, and it's like, you know, the same idea as like when uh, when uh, you know a, bl- a black person goes to like a mostly white school or something like that, and mm-hmm. people want their attention and they want to be friends with them just so they can tell their real friends that they have a black friend. You know, yeah, like, that kind of like out of novelty. Yeah, like 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 you you basically become like either an inconvenience, like you said, or you become like a a, a really nice accessory for someone to show off. <laughs> yeah, like a mascot. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's uh, it's weird. It's for me. I I don't know if you, this is your experience, but for me, I have there's all these little like pinpricks throughout the day, you know, where you just kind of drain your energy, like getting cut in line or you know, someone making fun of you and their language when you, they think you don't understand or like just all these like small little things that aren't worth confronting or, you know, even thinking about. But then when something like that actually needs to be confronted or that confronts you, it's like your emotional energy is kind of drained and it becomes a much bigger deal. So it's a lot harder to handle the medium level inconveniences I don't know if that does that make sense. I don't, I'm not sure why no, you yeah, brought that it, up. It, it, uh, yeah, it, it completely does. I mean, like something I, I recently noticed is just like I totally understand the stereotype about like the angry black guy or the angry black woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like there's this stereotype where like oh the, so the big angry black guy who's just like angry and pissed off all the time, and it's like I get it now because eventually you get to a point where you're just like if I pretend to be really angry and rude to people then they'll just leave me alone. Yeah. You know, and it's like, like, not that I'm necessarily upset, but it's like, you know, if I go outside and if I kind of put on this face and this air of like, leave me alone, don't mess with me, then maybe I can get through the day without someone saying something to me or about me or whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and like I said, it's, you know, it's not like really like mean, like really hateful racism. Like, you know, like there's not like a, you know, foreigners, foreigners only, uh, water fountains or whatever like it's not like that <laughs> yeah, yeah you know like, like I, i'm not trying to say like i'm like i'm like rosa parks you know obviously not but i mean it's just kind of like yeah there's these little little pinprick things where it's just like why do i have to put up with this you know yeah yeah and i mean and then, for the most part well, too there's, there's one, one, I, something came to mind really quick um the the thing whenever i say this to people people ask me this question i say it and they're like well why don't you just go back to america and it's like well i shouldn't have to you know yeah the, anyway, go on. For the most part, I think being white in another country works out in your favor, where I think people are much more kind of that celebrity thing where they give you status you haven't earned, but there's still all these little things that like are just frustrating when you're trying to live day to day. You know, when you're just trying to get things done, things are like deflating your energy little by little just because it's in, more inconvenient than it needs to be. Well, sure. I mean, it goes back to the celebrity thing. It's like, if you're like a legit Hollywood celebrity, you have to put up with people talking trash about you on the internet and on TV. Mm-hmm. You have to put up with paparazzi going through your garbage and taking pictures of you like in the bathroom and stuff. Um, you have to put up all this stuff. But then the payoff usually is that, you know, you you film for a month and you get $20 million for it. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. And so and like, that's the path. It's like, well, your life is really grandiose and you get invited to all these parties and, and, and you can, you have a lot of social sway and, and things like that, but then people treat you like garbage. Sometimes it's kind of that payoff. Yeah. Um, 
So it's kind of that give and take in that relationship. But then, you know, that's why I say like, like you only get the bad parts of being a celebrity because it's like people do all these things to you and treat you a certain way, but I don't have $20 million in my bank account, you know? Yeah. So it's like, like, I don't get any of the good parts. I just get all the, all the bad stuff. Yeah. I get like the pendulum um, doesn't seem like it swings equally. Right. And I mean, like I'm sure in Thailand, it's the same thing, but in Japan, you know, you get these people that they come to Japan and they're only here for like a year or two. And like, it's, it's always, it's always like mostly white guys I've noticed, but they come to Japan, they're only here for like a year or two and they just, they're at the clubs and they're picking up different girls every night and yeah. they're kind of living like, Oh, like I'm white and I'm like super special and I'm a foreigner and I'm awesome and cool, whatever. And they kind of have that, that thing. And I mean, if, if that's your thing, I guess that's fine, whatever. But, yeah. but for people like me who are trying to just live a normal life, we get roped in into the same crowd in a way. Yes. Yeah. So, the- and so people. People are like, oh, you must have so many Japanese girls and so many Japanese girlfriends. It's like, I'm just trying to live life like a normal dude. I have no interest in that type of thing. But because I look like them, I get kind of roped in with them in a way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The people that come out for that is always, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's always just really gross. Like, I don't know. Well, it's, it's, I mean, in, in Japan, they have a term for it. It's called charisma, man. <laughs> um, which is what well, it, it refers to, um, refers to, I mean, it's usually white dudes who like, like back in America, like, you know, they're like below average, yeah. they're kind of gross. Thing. They're very socially awkward. They're very like, they couldn't get any girls in their home country, but you come to Japan or in your case, Thailand. And because there's that, that sort of celebrity thing where it's like, because you look different, you're special. Yeah. Uh, and so they come to Japan and I'm sure Thailand too. And they kind of, you know, like, oh, they get all these girls and they get all these things and they're special and they're unique because they're a foreigner, but, blah, blah, blah. but it's like, you know, if you have like a Japanese person, for example, who doesn't have a whole lot of dealings with foreigners and they see this person, they're like, oh, cool. It's, it's a white guy or oh, it's a foreign guy. It's a black guy, whatever. This is so cool. I'm going to get to know them. But like when I like get them, you know, I can instantly tell like, oh, this person's actually a loser. Yeah. <laughs> like, like in their home country, this person probably has very few friends, can't get any girls, can't get anything. It's like, I know that this person's a loser, but they come to Japan and they, they're, they're special because they're different. I'm yeah. sure people who do like the sort of sex tourism or whatever in Thailand, I'm sure they, they all look a certain way, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yep. Well, they're all about 30 years older than the people they're with, which is, <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh man, yeah. it's gross. Um yeah, uh, I don't know where to go from there. I feel weird ending it on that note. I don't know if you have anything <laughs> else <laughs> you want to talk about. No, no, no. I think I think that's good. I mean, it's just you know the the point is like I guess the whole point of this podcast or this episode, whatever, is just like you know in terms of I mean, obviously the main focus is Asia, but I'm sure this is true in places I've never been to. Yeah, where it's just like what you see on TV and movies, and like everyone knows that TV and movies are fake. Yeah, but we all still ingrain that that sort of image in our head in a way like yeah. everyone knows like all oh, the tv's fake movies are all fake but then you know if you've only ever seen japan in movies and tv like people think that that's what it's actually like and i guess the main point of this this episode or ever is just like you know like no one ever gets it right and like people are just people and you know a country is just a country like people are just trying to live their life and 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 do do their own thing and you know it's like it's, it's not all for the sake of a joke. Like, you know, Japan is yeah. not a country that exists just for a joke. You know? yeah. yeah. I, I remember I went to Africa and I went on safari and that like, that was my first um, like illusion shattering moment was going on safari inside of fences. Like, cause they have to contain all the animals. And I was like, Oh, I always assumed all these pictures and safaris and all this stuff was, you know, just in the wild, but the majority of them is, you know, it's a business and they have to, yeah. you know, feed their animals and keep everything contained. And it was just like, Oh, all the stuff you see on TV is just frame. You frame everything you don't want out of the picture. And that's what happens with movies and TV shows and all this stuff, wherever they go, you're looking, you're looking at what they want to show you and you're not seeing the rest. So like, deciding what a place is like based on what you see on TV or on the computer or whatever, you have to remember that it's, 
it's through you're you're seeing what they want you to see. And a lot of times it's not as special as it they're showing, but it's way more deep than their, you know, the perception is. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how the, the internet in general is cuz you know, like with Instagram and stuff, it's like people take the best picture with the best lighting from the best angle. Um you know, in the best moment. And it's like, that was one moment of, of a 24 hour day. That was like one second, you know, it's like, there's so much more to everything that you don't see. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, just like people don't, it's nothing is what you think it is until you actually see it for yourself, you know? Yeah. And then, sorry, one last point I wanted to make, I was going to bring it up earlier about the Logan Paul thing is uh-huh. when you go somewhere else, this is not, not to you, but to, whoever's listening and you go to another country, you should remember act how you would act in your country. Like if Logan Paul found a dead body in America, I, I don't know Logan Paul. I assume I would hope that he wouldn't make jokes and do whatever he did, and, you know, like exploit it for views. And people seem to think that when you go somewhere else, it's like, Oh no, this is just like a playground. This is, this doesn't count. And you can't disrespect the people you are coming into their country. Like, obviously, culturally, there are things that are different, but, like, you should still act like a person. You should still treat people with respect wherever you go. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely true. And that's true for, like, any tourist anywhere. And that's why, like, I, you know, I, I, I hate, <laughs> I hate tourists. I'm sure you do, too. Yes. Where it's just like, I mean, I get it. Like, you want to go to a different country, have a different experience. And and I respect that. That's that's great. Yeah. Everyone should travel the world, see different places. I get that. But it's just like, yeah, for them, that's like one week of their life. And so it's like, doesn't count, doesn't matter. Hey, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? Yeah. And so, but then for us who are living there, it's like, you know, like it's, it's the rules apply to us, especially somewhere like, you know, Japan for sure. And I assume Thailand is the same way where, you know, white people or, or foreigners are a very small demographic. Um, I mean, like respectively. Yeah. And so, and so like, you know, whatever someone who looks like me does, I'm the one who has to pay for the consequences of it. Yeah. Um, because, you know, that person goes home after a week, I'm still here, but the people who had to experience that thing, whatever, you know, whatever the, the Logan Paul of tomorrow did <laughs> or will do. Yeah. Um, you know, like people are going to look at me and be like, oh, he might do the same thing because he, he's probably just like that other guy I saw. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, obviously what you do has consequences for locals, but it's like it has consequences for, you know, anyone after you who goes to the same place. Now suddenly, you know, they get punished for what you did. Yeah. You know, well, we just so, had we just had two Americans get arrested uh, at a temple uh-huh. because they mooned a a a statue in the temple and <laughs> they posted it. They posted it on Instagram. That's what got them caught. I think they got arrested yeah. at the airport trying to leave after posting it on Instagram. And it's was like, I, what are you thinking? Like why? I, I don't know. It's <clears throat> and, well, and that's, see, that, that's the very thing too, is it's like, you know, forget, forget the whole Logan Paul is in Japan thing. Forget the whole like foreigner thing. Like forget all that. But it's like, you know, mooning someone in a temple or like Logan Paul, filming a, a person who, who hung themselves, like forget the whole, you know, in a different country thing, but just like, why would you ever do that yeah. anyway? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like, like, you, like you, you would never do it yeah. at your home. I would assume like you, if you're at home, you found a dead body, you wouldn't think, Oh, I'm going to film this. I, right. Like, I don't know. Maybe he would. Yeah, that, that is the thing. With Logan Paul, you never know. That dude <laughs> has done good things for views. Sure. Yeah. But any normal person, yeah, if you found someone who hung himself, you know, I mean, first of all, that would that should kind of mess you up. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's like he's there like laughing about it, like some kind of literal sociopath. Yeah. Um, but it's like that should mess you up. But also, it's like yeah, like y- you would you would have a different reaction than like, dude, take out your camera. And, and the thing, and a lot of people have mentioned this and. You know, I'm like the hundredth person to say this, but like, it, like if he was live streaming, like on Twitch or something, yeah. And then they came across the body, and he was like, "Holy crap, there's a body!" Like that would be one thing. Yeah. You know, it's like I came across this body. I was live streaming. It's happening right now. I get it. But like, he had to film it 
and then watch it back and then edit it and then watch the finished video back and then export it and then upload it. Like well, there's a lot of steps he, in there. He promoted it even beforehand. The day before he's like, guys, video coming out tomorrow is crazy. Get ready for it. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. So like, he, like, you know, it, it's not like he just stumbled on it while live streaming or, or, or whatever. It's mm-hmm. like, there's like at least 10 steps in there that he had to go through 10, 10 potential, like point of returns that he could have hit. But like the fact that he just went through all of them and his, his final thought was, this is going to be lit guys. Yeah. That, that kind of tells you what kind of person he is. You know? Yeah. Well, not even 10 steps, but how many other people knew about it and were involved in making it and no one stopped them. No one was like, Hey, don't do this. This is not going to go well. This is a bad idea. Like, it, yeah, that's, that's what it, it's amazing. Well, it, that's, that's, that's kind of the thing about like when you get too big to fail. Yeah. You know, sort of it's like, you know, if, if anyone else on YouTube had put up that video, it would have been taken down. Their channel would have been deleted, like all that. But because it was, it was Logan Paul, it's just like he, he can kind of do whatever he wants and he doesn't have to suffer any consequences. And everyone around him, wants to leech off of his fame and his money. And so they'll say yes to anything Yeah, because you know, like, you know, I'm sure that whoever says no to Logan Paul, they probably get kicked out of the group, you know? Yeah. Um, well, what, and it's like, what was equally as gross to me was seeing all the people jumping, like making videos right away to criticize him. And it, it was like a lot of them felt genuine, but some of them were like, Man, I feel like you're just happy that this happened. So now you have a chance to get a bunch of views yourself. Do you know what I mean? Well, like yeah, the- that, that's no, exactly, exactly. I mean, like some people, because you know, I live in Japan, so some people asked me about it, like on, on Twitter or whatever. Like, they're like, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Like, are you going to make a video? Are you going to make a video? And it's like, like, the worst thing that happened that day was that Logan Paul filmed a, a dead body. That was like the worst thing that happened. Yeah. But. The second worst thing is that then my twi- my YouTube feed was full of hundreds of everyone's hot takes. Yeah. It's it's this um it's just this like this machine where someone does something and then hundreds of people have to give and then the person does their reaction to the other reaction and then it's just like 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 that's why I just wanted to kind of with my channel, like I just wanted to do like animations and video essays. Cause it's like, I just wanted to get away from this whole like drama machine that is kind of this self perpetuating like cycle or whatever. You yeah. Know? Cause it's like, everyone's so desperate for views and like, I mean, it's, it's way easier. It's a lot easier to start drama or participate in drama than it is to just make better content. Yeah. And so, you know, like it's really easy to be like, yo, can you believe what this guy did? I cannot believe it. Please subscribe. You know, <laughs> like it's, it, it, and so like, yeah, it's just, it, uh, that's, that's like obviously not as bad as what Logan Paul did, but that's something that also, uh, is really frustrating about this is anytime someone famous does something bad, everyone has to give their opinion. And like, I used to make videos kind of like that, like mm. about PewDiePie. And stuff. Yeah. But I quickly realized that like, this is really dumb. Yeah, and and like, I think it's kind of soul sucking too, right? Like, you if you just focus on what dumb people do all the time, it you kind of get that negativity in your soul. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it just it just um, it, it's just you know when you it's just like those drama channels like Drama Alert or whatever, where it's yeah. like they they just are looking for the next person to fail. Yeah. You know, and like instead of being like, look at what, look at what this cool thing is, or look at this positive thing, or like let's have some fun, whatever. It's just like they're trying to find the next person who messes up, and that's how they get famous or yeah. whatever. Um, well, that's what so that's what's interesting yeah, about what iDubs does, because he, mm-hmm. I mean, he does a similar thing where he's like, hey, that's dumb, but he seems like he puts in so much more effort and thought behind it that it while it is similar, it seems to stand above the rest, like with the content cop and that type of stuff. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's like with what, what IDubs does is he, he uses this kind of like, you know, calling out 
someone with the drama, whatever, he uses that to, to actually create something himself. Yeah. Um, because you know, like reacting to something, reacting to content is not in itself content. It's yeah. just a reaction to content. And so like, you know, if someone just sits in front of their camera and is like, what, what Logan Paul did is bad and here's why that's just like a reaction. That's just like someone's like hot take on whatever. Yeah. But you know, if, if you take that and then you do what IDubs does where he turns it into his own thing, like that's something that's really respectable. And that's, I mean, that's kind of what I do. We're like, you know, I could just sit in front of a camera and be like, Riverdale is dumb. Reason number one, why Riverdale is dumb. Like I could just do that. Yeah. But like I take the TV show and then I have like a whole script and then I animate it and I turn it, I turn it into like this whole like production. I mean, sure. It's based on, you know, like a TV show, but I tried to turn it into its own thing instead of just like, here's my hot take on this week's episode, you know? Yeah. So I, I try to keep that philosophy where it's like, am I creating something or am I just part of the problem? Yeah. Well, Alex, I super appreciate you coming on the podcast. It's been a lot of fun. Talking oh, thank you for you. asking me. I, thank you for asking me. I appreciate it. Yeah. I don't get to talk to a lot of people who have similar life experiences living in other places. So it was a lot of fun. But how? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, yeah. Go ahead. How can people find you? Uh, well, on Twitter, I am at Judge of the Kings, and uh, on YouTube, I'm just Alex Myers. Uh, last name is M E Y E R S. Uh, you know, I do mostly now. I just do uh, animation, comedy type things. So, if you're interested in that, I mean, you know, even if you're not interested in the TV shows that I watch, I, I try to make it interesting for anyone. Yeah. Um, in fact, oftentimes the jokes aren't even about the show. It's usually like about something else. I just use the show as like a, a springboard to tell a different joke. So even if you don't care about teen dramas, you can probably enjoy the animations I watch. So go ahead and check them out. Cool. And you can follow us at on Twitter at I seen that pod.